Okay, uh, let's start the uh, today's lecture. Uh, it is about marketing of uh, speech processing. I will mainly uh, expand about the uh, speech recognition, uh, but it's also covers uh, most of the techniques uh, that are quite similar in the, uh, the TTS or speech uh, translation and so on. So first, uh, I will talk about end-to-end uh, base system uh, because uh, previous lectures uh, we have learned end-to-end uh, uh, speech recognition. So it may be better to start from that. And then I will actually also uh, the explain our the form based system, which is uh, the, I call it the HMM based system. And the, uh, the actually uh, the multilingual processing, there are some benefits of using form based system. So I will explain about it. And for this uh, multilingual uh, speech processing, actually uh, the CMU has been uh, the, the, uh, contributing a lot of uh, research uh, the activities to the community and i would like to also uh, introduce this kind of activity okay so uh let me first start the the uh the end-to-end -end, uh the the uh direction and this is actually one of the slides uh, that i already showed when i introduced the uh, the end-to-end -end speech recognition so uh the the one of the kind of uh the uh, difficulty of HM based speech recognition pipeline, uh, when I introduce this other uh, uh, figure, uh, is that uh, requiring the linguistic resources, and this is actually okay for the major languages like uh, uh, the English, Japanese, uh, Mandarin, and so on. But if we move, if we move to the, uh, the other uh, languages, uh, getting such kind of a linguistic resource uh, is more difficult. But still, uh, it's possible. So uh, the one of the benefits I emphasize uh, is that the end-to-end uh, -end system uh, doesn't require uh, such kind of linguistic resources, especially for the, uh, the phonetic uh, the, the information, and we can build uh, the speech recognition. So first, uh, the emphasize this kind of uh, the, the, uh, the uh, characteristics, and then explain about the uh, multilingual processing based on end-to-end -end speech recognition. However, I uh, emphasized several times, uh, this can be a pros and cons, and that I will explain it later. So first, uh, the, I will explain about uh, my uh, experience of working on the end-to-end -end speech recognition. I started to work on the end-to-end -end speech recognition around 2015. I would say it's one of the early adapter uh, of uh, the moving to end-to-end -end uh, the systems uh, compared with uh, other researchers. And then that, uh, we actually tried to uh, the work on uh, the first uh, English. And it's working quite well, like the other people re reported. And then I am thinking about trying to the other languages, which is uh, Japanese. And the Japanese is actually not ASR friendly uh, language, I would say. So uh, this is a a uh, typical sentence I actually extracted uh, from one of my uh, the, the, uh, Japanese uh, the articles. And the, this sentence uh, is actually quite uh, the difficult to uh, the handle for speech recognition. First, uh, there is no word boundary compared with other languages, uh, there is no word boundary. And the other uh, the properties are that the, someone may recognize. Anyway, there are totally four uh, scripts that are mixed uh, in this one sentence. One is hiragana, uh, the other is katakana, and the third one is kanji, which is uh, the originally from China, uh, and the Roman uh, alphabet and so on. This kind of a mix of the script happened uh, so often. And actually uh, the, this uh, the, the variety also making the pronunciation uh, very difficult. It depends on the context, on the, it depends on the, uh, the, uh, the meaning. Uh, some of the, uh, the, the characters uh, change the pronunciations. Uh, so this, uh, the, the uh, the uh, providing the pronunciation uh, is also very, very difficult. And the last uh, the, uh, the part is that the, 
one of the character may include many actually uh, the phonemes. Like for example, uh, this uh, the, uh, character uh, is just a one phoneme N, uh, which is like uh, the other languages. But this character, it actually has uh, uh, several pronunciations depending on the context. But uh, one of the, uh, the, the way of uh, the, the pronunciation, uh, we call this uh, the character as kokorozashi, which has uh, uh, 10 uh, phonemes, uh, five syllables. Only one character, but the, 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 the syllable uh, length, uh, length, uh, the phoneme lengths are very, very different. So in general, uh, the, it was regarded as, as that dealing with the Japanese is very difficult due to this kind of a four, uh, three uh, reasons. Maybe there are several others. And then uh, what we will do is actually using the tokenizer, or actually it's just, we don't actually purely just doing the to tokenization. It's actually try to solve all this problem jointly uh, by uh, the considering the pronunciation and some kind of a morphological analysis and so on. So uh, this kind of a tokenizer morphological analyzer is very important when we uh, start to work on Japanese. And the, uh, to do that, uh, Japanese uh, are the, the researchers are lucky because uh, it's a more like a high resource side and there are a lot of researchers. So we actually have a lot of uh, very to great tools to perform the tokenization, which is very, very good. With that, we can actually uh, make speech recognition work in Japanese. However, uh, the tokenizer also has an issue. First, it has uh, some mistakes. Uh, but it's, if the tokenizer is getting better and better, probably we can ignore this kind of uh, issues. One of the most difficult issue for me is that it's change the result, depending on the tokenizer. Uh, if you're using a different software, different algorithm, different dictionary, uh, tokenizer output will be changed. And uh, if we do the kind of speech recognition experiments, we actually cannot compare them. So this is actually quite a difficult problem. Not only token itself is kind of difficult problem. If we're using this as an uh, the speech recognition, uh, the, this actually becomes a quite a large barrier. And actually uh, the one of the example is that, uh, for example, one company wants to use a tokenizer that uh, they're made by that company. And the other company want to use the other tokenizer developed by the other company. And then the, the, we are not easily kind of compare the word error rate since the unit of the word is different. It happens the, the, in the company that I was belong to, by the way. So there is a, such kind of an issue. Anyway, that, that, that's uh, that, that, uh, what tokenizer is doing. So uh, this is one of the example uh, using the to tokenizer, uh, most widely used one, uh, Mekabu. And the, we just throw this uh, text and then tokenizer actually, uh, how to say, uh, the split uh, each of the characters. And as I mentioned, uh, this is not the, the only things uh, that we also have to care about the, uh, the uh, pronunciation uh, and the part of speech and so on. So it's actually uh, the, the, this uh, tools is not only tokenizing it, but also providing a pronunciation. This one is actually pronunciation and the, uh, the, the uh, part of speech uh, information and so on. So uh, that we have to use this kind of a tool uh, to uh, perform uh, the, the speech recognition, uh, which is great, but it, it actually has a lot of problems as I mentioned. And then I, my, one of my research goal is actually want to remove uh, tokenizer uh, the, from uh, the uh, speech recognition uh, the, the, uh, process. And I feel sorry about Graham because Graham is one of the person that make another very famous tokenizer called Kitty. Kitty, yeah. So actually a lot of people actually working on the tokenizer, which is great. And I also really appreciate this effort, but at the same time, as a pure ASR purpose, I actually want to skip this direction. So that's why they, I actually started to apply end-to-end uh, -end speech recognition to uh, Japanese. Probably this is the first uh, trial. I'm not sure, but uh, at least in terms of the, how to say, paper, uh, our group is the one of the first team that's uh, performing the end-to-end -end speech recognition 
uh, with Japanese uh, without uh, that the tokenizer and so on. And actually, the performance was very good, surprisingly very good. Uh, this is the, the uh, character error rate, 10%. Uh, when I first tried this one, and later with a lot of techniques, now it goes to 5% or less than 5% in the famous Japanese benchmark called uh, the corpus of spontaneous uh, Japanese. And this is uh, the without uh, tokenizer to reaching this kind of performance. So this uh, experience was very good to me to actually moving to a multilingual end-to-end uh, -end, uh, ASR. So as I mentioned, uh, um, Japanese is, in terms of the written form, it's very complicated. Uh, the, but still, uh, just through the pair data, uh, it started to be working. So maybe we can use this architecture to the multilingual and to end ASR. So this is actually, uh, the, given this uh, story, I started to apply end-to-end -end speech recognition to the multilingual uh, processing and also color switching end-to-end uh, -end ASR. And let me start to uh, introduce the, what uh, the multilingual end-to-end -end ASR is doing. So this is a kind of a, a typical uh, pipeline of using the speech recognition. And then if we uh, the extend this one to the multilingual uh, speech recognition, first uh, we have to do is detect which speak, uh, uh, the which language uh, is spoken uh, by using a language detector or uh, asking the user to put this information a priori. Anyway, after the language detector, uh, we actually can almost completely separately build a uh, speech recognition. Although, of course, uh, this part, feature extraction part can be uh, the, the, the unified, uh, and the part of the acoustic modeling part can be unified. But uh, generally, to build uh, the speech recognition in a multilingual method, we actually have to uh, the prepare a lot of kind of linguistic resources or a lot of kind of engineering to build uh, various uh, languages. And then the, my attempt is to uh, the, uh, make it uh, with a single uh, neural network. Okay, let's uh, the start to discuss what kind of techniques I am using. But actually, this is super simple. What I use is just first correct 10 languages. And then uh, train uh, regarding each other uh, the, the one corpus. And then uh, the train the single neural network. Basically, that's it. Um, I didn't do any kind of a special things, uh, except for by following the machine translation convention, I also put the language ID in the beginning of the sentence, so that first network predict the language ID, which correspond to the language de detector, and then the other. Uh, uh, the transcription of that language is following. So basically, that's it. So uh, the, I, uh, this is more like just using the uh, data augmentation. Uh, no, sorry, uh, data preparation. And then uh, the, the, I can uh, the make this kind of neural network. And note that I don't use any other uh, pronunciation, uh, the, the dictionary, and so on. And this is one of the, uh, the most kind of difficult part when we don't have a knowledge to get a kind of a, uh, the access to the uh, various language resources. Of course, uh, the, the, if there are some kind of knowledge, definitely we can do. But uh, in general, it is not easy to have such kind of access uh, of that. So due to that, uh, this process is quite easy. And let's check the performance. Actually, performance was also okay. I tried this one uh, with the, 10 languages, uh, mostly yeah, the, the languages in Europe, and they, I mixed the, uh, the uh, Chinese and Japanese. And the blue one is uh, language dependent, uh, which means that we actually built the ASR system for each language. 
And the red one is just uh, they combine everything. And the one single neural network to uh, the, the recognize uh, this mixed 10 language speech. And surprisingly, it's working well. Uh, note that the, the some languages, especially when the uh, the uh, data is enough, uh, it's actually degrade the performance. However, some cases, the improvement is quite large. And this improvement comes from the data sharing structure, since we kind of mix all the data. And at least encoder part uh, would be possibly doing a language independent processing. So by mixing this kind of uh, the other uh, language data, which is very helpful to regularize the encoder part at least. And then it's working quite well in this experiment. And the language prediction is almost perfect, uh, almost 100% in the, each of the language pair, except for the, uh, the Spanish Italian. It has some kind of uh, the similarity in the language, and the language recognition is a little bit difficult. But uh, other than that, uh, language recognition part is also perfect. And the, uh, this is uh, the applied to the, uh, the major uh, languages. And then I also moved to the other kind of low resource uh, languages, uh, uh, which is uh, the collected from the uh, Babel, Babel uh, project. And by the way, the, some of the, these all are, uh, represent the hero. And some of them are actually, uh, the, when I uh, cut and paste, the uh, characters, it's as this, the information is disappeared. Uh, this kind of, how they say, issue uh, happens often. So uh, when you apply the multilingual processing, uh, please be careful about copy and paste. Sometimes it's not working. <laughs> and then the, the, even for this uh, the, the language, uh, the uh, low resource uh, language cases, I had a kind of similar trend uh, that the mixing the language and the, the building a single neural network seemed to be working. Uh, quite well. And actually, finally, I, uh, my colleagues actually even uh, extend this direction to uh, using the, uh, the 100 uh, languages. It's not exactly 190 something uh, languages uh, using the CMU uh, uh, wilderness uh, data that Professor Adam uh, Black uh, 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 corrected uh, for uh, the, this uh, the approach. Uh, and then I, we got similar uh, performance uh, based on that. Okay, so uh, this is actually a question. So how many people were involved in the, this development? So 10, of course, you know, given that we have an end-to-end -end SR, and then uh, we have to build 10 other language the speech recognition. Uh, how many people are involved in the development? Can someone answer it? Okay, uh, the answer is only one. <laughs> that, that many people actually expect, only me actually. <laughs> and uh, how long did it take to build this system? Ten language. Good question. <laughs> very, very good question. The answer is that data preparation one day, GPU one week, for ten days. Sorry, at that time. Yeah. Now, if we use you know uh, the several GPUs, probably uh, that uh, two to three days to finish this kind of uh, the the. Uh, uh, the, the training and the linguistic knowledge. I would say that only what I use is the Unicode. And this is actually one, mis one of my mistake. I use a Python 2. I should have used a Python 3. And then the, the, the things are more easy. Uh, but the, uh, uh, anyway, uh, the, we didn't, don't have to use uh, this kind of linguistic knowledge. Um, with this kind of an effort, uh, of course, the, after that, uh, we actually write a paper about this one. And the, when writing the paper, we also need to have our, uh, other researchers help to 
uh, they uh, do additional experiments and so on. Uh, so they totally the uh, the two uh, the finish this paper uh, the, we actually uh, they have a three or four authors but the, the most of the work was all done by only me and then actually we submitted this paper to ASRU which is one of the uh, the most kind of famous uh, speech recognition uh, workshop and then the, this paper I got the best paper candidate not the best paper the selected as the uh, nominated as the best paper but we kind of lost the uh, the best paper, but I think it's okay. You know, the other people spending, you know, a lot of time, you know, three months or half half year, and a lot of kind of resources to, and then to finally write a paper. This one, as I mentioned, uh, most of the work, one day of the scripting work, and then uh, write a paper, and then we got the kind of uh, the best paper candidate. So I'm actually uh, the very satisfied with this result. Okay, so then uh, the, the, the important thing uh, is that uh, this kind of uh, effort can be done just using the data preparation. Uh, this is a very kind of a cool part uh, of the, uh, the uh, using the, this kind of end-to-end -end system. And then I actually, uh, the, the, from now, not I, we, I will say, the, the, my colleagues, uh, they, they started to uh, extend this methodology even for the, uh, the, the, uh, the code switching. And what we did in the very beginning of this experiment was that we just concatenate two sentences, which is different languages. That's it. And then simulate the code switching. Uh, we know that it is simulation. You know, the, other, uh, the, the code switching, uh, the code switching may happen in the uh, the same speaker and even in the within the one sentence the code switching may happen but uh, as a proof of concept we started to work on uh, this kind of code switching is the just mixing the data and then it's actually uh, working uh, quite well i mean by using the uh, the without the code switching uh, the, of course uh, the, the word error rate is quite uh, high However, uh, by using the, uh, the code switching, uh, the simulation, uh, we can actually uh, the, the correctly detect the, uh, the, uh, the language boundary and then uh, the, the, uh, the perform the code switching uh, speech recognition uh, the, the, in this uh, experiment. However, I, I just want to emphasize that this is a simulation. The most difficult part of the code switching is actually we don't have a real data. So to do that, uh, in addition to the simulation, uh, we also have to the, the, uh, the, the care about how to uh, the make simulation data to be close to the real data, which is a very important research direction now. So anyway, the, I will play with some of the audio and the corresponding uh, the, uh, the system output. Difference is the uh, the different uh, the, the ground truth, and the ASR is the uh, the ASR output, and we use this kind of uh, the audio. These persons around the world were U.S. exports rose in the month, but not nearly as much as imports. Next example. Nihon demo news ni natta to omoimasu ga. Le Conseil supérieur de la magistrature est présidé par le président de la République. Par exemple, il y a trois langues qui sont mixtes. Seconde-feira. Ça s'applique naturellement aussi pour les contrats de travail. Eh, deux personnes ont reçu un message de la part de la Like this, yeah. Again, it's a simulation, but uh, they're just using the data preparation. Uh, we can uh, handle uh, this kind of code switching. So this is a kind of a, uh, the one uh, nice part uh, of the end-to-end -end speech recognition. Uh, we just uh, the, try to make our problem to be data preparation, and then we can get to some other uh, straightforward uh, result. Of course, to improve that to the real data and so on, we need more effort. But as a first step to do something, it's actually quite good. And the other example is actually similar to the uh, today's uh, the language trend. Uh, that we are also working on the language uh, endangered. Uh, language documentation 
and the uh, is Jalton. Yeah, okay, yeah. The Jalton uh, is actually uh, working with the uh, Jonathan uh, Army uh, Gettysburg College. He will be a guest lecturer here. Actually, uh, this is uh, the collaboration happened suddenly. Uh, Jonathan sent me email. Uh, he wants to use speech recognition. And then I am answered. We have an end to end answer. So if we have a, uh, you have data, uh, that we can do it. And uh, usually uh, after the conversation, this kind of a conversation happens often, but usually it would be failed because the data size is very small. However, Jonathan is great. He actually collected over 100 hours uh, of this other uh, endangered language called uh, Yoroshot uh, Mixtec, uh, which is in one of the uh, village uh, in Mexico. And uh, he and his colleagues actually uh, often visited uh, the, this village and uh, other, uh, this area and uh, collecting uh, the data and uh, where they find the format so that we can actually perform the end-to-end ASR. -end but still uh, the problem is that the, uh, the, there are two kinds of issues. One is the, uh, the, uh, the transcription, uh, the, the bottleneck. It is very difficult to transcribe uh, this kind of the, uh, the endangered language uh, because it doesn't have uh, the uh, standard uh, the script form that we discussed before. And the second one is that uh, due to that, we actually using a quite a linguistic oriented uh, that, uh, script to uh, the, uh, transcribe uh, the audio uh, of this kind of endangered language, which means that the transcriber must have a very good knowledge about linguistics. So that the, the transcriber, uh, the shortage is, is also very important uh, the difficulty uh, in the endangered languages. And our end-to-end ASR it's actually as partly solving this problem. Our performance is actually quite good. Uh, the, it's comparable to the novice uh, transcriber. It's, the, their process is actually two steps. One step is a uh, novice transcriber to transcribe it. And then later expert will uh, the correct it. Or expert will directly uh, the, the, the do it and the novice is just kind of a training. Uh, by using the uh, the the, uh, uh, the, uh, the expert transcript and so on, but anyway, uh, in this kind of a transcription process, we usually have such kind of layers, and the our end-to-end ASR -end at least are comparable to this uh, novice uh, the transcriber, so which can mitigate possibly mitigate the uh, transcriber uh, shortage. So uh, the, with that end-to-end uh, -end ASR, it's actually uh, the, they're showing some kind of uh, the, the advantages uh, they, they, uh, based on uh, removing uh, the, this problem in the endangered languages. But I just want to emphasize that this is a very unique case. This is uh, the, uh, the, uh, based on the great effort by uh, the Jonathan Amis and his colleagues to collect large amount of data, 100 hours of data, and then we can realize it. In the other cases, uh, usually we don't have uh, so many uh, the, the transcribed data. So it's the, the, the other uh, usual endangered language cases, it is still very difficult for us to use end-to-end -end data. Okay, so anyway, the end-to-end -end data is somehow working, but the, uh, the problem, as I mentioned, is that the, the, in general, uh, many languages uh, don't have enough data. And then what kind of technology uh, we can use? Uh, this is uh, transfer learning or fine tuning. This is also very similar to the other uh, machine translation and other, other multilingual uh, NLP techniques. So the uh, first, we try to build a seed model, which is uh, the, uh, trained by uh, the highly sourced language or uh, the mix uh, the, the multilingual data, like I showed before. And then uh, making a big uh, seed uh, ASR model. And then the, given this kind of seed ASR model, we just have a small amount of uh, target speech data. And then uh, data by using a seed ASR model to transfer 
uh, to the target language ASR model uh, by using the small amount of training data. Okay, and then actually the, the one question. So to transfer the model to the target language, since the neural network has uh, too many parameters, right, hundred million uh, the parameters and so on for standard speech recognition cases. And then we usually freeze some of the layers and only fine tune some of the uh, layers. And then the question, uh, which layer uh, we should fine tune in the uh, language, uh, the transfer learning strategy? In general. I think everyone must have a correct answer in your mind. Actually, uh, we usually uh, that only train higher layers. That is enough. First, of course, we have to change the, uh, the script uh, the, from the, uh, the given language to the, uh, the target language if they are not included, right? And then the, the last linear laser must be uh, the, the initialized must be fine-tuned. And then the, uh, the speech recognition end-to-end -end system, or not end-to-end -end system, acoustic model or neural network in general, lower layer, more like doing some feature extraction to try to capture uh, the, the invariant, uh, the phoneme-like representation. So if the kind of layer goes to gradually higher, uh, the, it's actually uh, the, the uh, goes to more kind of linguistic information. And then the, uh, these kind of uh, the initial uh, the first layers are more to, uh, to uh, represent the acoustic information. So that if we try to kind of uh, the, uh, the perform the transfer learning from the uh, big C the model to the target language model, uh, we should focus on tuning, uh, fine tuning the higher layers of a uh, deep neural network in general. By the way, the question, if for example, the data is very noisy and the target is not the language, but to target to some kind of noisy speech, a uh, fit layer, we should fine tune. It should be shallow layers, right? So uh, this is in general, general property, by the way. So. Uh, the, I am very lazy, so I actually uh, the, uh, the fine tune all the layers uh, because it's uh, the easy to uh, do it. But it, uh, yes. Yeah, sorry, uh, yes. But so I guess um, fine tuning like just the early layers or fine tuning just the late layers is a very extreme version of regularization, right? Mm -hmm. So you're either like you're basically regularizing some layers to not move at all mm -hmm. then you're regular you're not regularizing your right because you're basically allowing them to move freely and i wonder if there's anything like in between those two i mean obviously that adds more hyperparameters to the model or something but mm -hmm. like is there is there any work that kind of more generally says well the layers at the bottom probably shouldn't be moving much or they should be moving in a particular way mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. um the the I don't know so much about this work, but definitely it should be a very good idea. Uh, but the, the mostly people are just kind of analyze this kind of thing with the, uh, the layer wise uh, the processing. Mm -hmm. There are some work, uh, it's not completely what you mean to say, but some work is actually uh, the focusing on the, like for example, the uh, some particular part of the uh, network like for example, inside the transformer, some people only kind of uh, the adapt the, the feed for other part, uh, and some people don't kind of uh, the, uh, freeze the uh, query key value and so on. There are such kind of work exist, but uh, I actually don't know so much about this kind of direction. Okay, so uh, the, by doing that, uh, we can actually uh, the perform the uh, target, target uh, the uh, transfer learning to the target uh, the language. 
And uh, this kind of uh, uh, techniques are quite popular and uh, are mostly using uh, for uh, many other uh, speech other processing tasks uh, when we uh, use the uh, try to have our uh, target language, uh, the, 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 the speech recognition and the TTS and so on. Okay, so uh, the, uh, the, these are more like when we have our anyway, uh, the, the pair data in the CEDO model. But actually, uh, in some cases, we have a huge amount of uh, the speech only data. We don't have a so much uh, the pair data. Uh, how to kind of solve this problem? And then uh, actually people are using the self-supervised learning uh, in this uh, the framework lot uh, in uh, the, uh, the current speech recognition uh, technologies. And I just list uh, the three techniques. I will not dig into the, uh, the each of the techniques. So if you are interested in that, uh, you can actually uh, check some of the uh, references. One of them are uh, web 2 back 2.0. Actually, 2.0 means that there is a prior study, uh, web 2 back 2 which was OK, which was starting to be working. Uh, but the, the, after uh, the, the more effort, uh, the basically uh, the, uh, the making the training strategy simple. And then uh, by using the large, uh, the huge amount of the, uh, the, the speech on the data, uh, Web2 back 2.0 started to be working. And I'll say that this is the first success uh, in uh, the speech recognition uh, in terms of uh, breaking the record of various benchmarks. And then the uh, later uh, Hubert, uh, the based uh, self supervised learning also is proposed uh, by the, uh, the, the, the same uh, the group, uh, the, the, uh, the meta uh, people. And uh, this is actually, I would say that simplified version compared with web 2 back 2.0. Web 2 back 2.0 is uh, the, uh, very uh, the, the difficult to train in the, uh, the contrastive loss part, while Hubert is actually quite uh, the, the, the similar to the other uh, famous uh, training criteria like masked language model. And uh, how to kind of uh, uh, the make masked language model work in the Hubert is that instead of using the continuous uh, speech representation, uh, they're just using a k-means. And then uh, this uh, the Hubert uh, the, is using this k-means as a target uh, to pre-train the model. The k-means is really simple k-means, like uh, the, we usually use in the, uh, the first or second uh, the, the, uh, the courses in the uh, pattern recognition. And they recently, uh, the Google actually uh, pre uh, the proposed the further simplified uh, model called uh, London Projection Quant Quantizer. And this is actually quite uh, the, the sensational to me. So before uh, the uh, London Projection Quantizer, Hubert or Web2 Back 2.0, anyway, they try to somehow imitate phoneme as a target by using the k-means or contrastive uh, the loss or whatever. However, uh, the uh, London projection quantizer still using the, some quantized uh, target, but how to get this quantized target? They just convert MSCC to the high dimensional uh, the features by using the random projection. And then uh, the, by, use, uh, by sampling the, uh, some of the, uh, the, uh, the uh, the, the uh, centroid, and then by using this as a target for neural network. So this random projection space is not close to phoneme at all. However, anyway, this problem is very difficult. And then by using this one as a target, uh, the, the neural network is somehow learning something. And then it can be used as a fine tuning uh, of the initial model. And the, uh, this uh, random projection quantizer is also at a comparable performance to uh, Hubert or web 2 back 2.0. And the, these are now very popular, especially web 2 back 2.0 is 
very, very popular, right? How many people heard the web to back? Uh, the... <laughs> yeah, most people, right? I actually the, the people should know that because uh, the one of the advanced <laughs> part of the assignment three is to use the either of the web to back and other uh, Hubert. <laughs> um, and the I think uh, the many people are using the uh s3 prl shankai right yeah so uh the our group is actually uh the uh the, the contributing not to making a, a pre-trained model but to make a how to say benchmark for this uh the speech uh self-supervised learning called the spark uh, benchmark uh which is uh we try to kind of make a uh, general uh, benchmark, uh, including the speech recognition, spoken language understanding, uh, the uh, speaker recognition, and so on, and see whether this kind of uh, the self supervised learning features are generally working on various uh, speech recognition downstream tasks. And then through this kind of project, we developed uh, some kind of uh, the uh, uh, the mainly National Taiwan University, uh, but the, 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 we actually uh, developed together with them uh, the software called S3PRL, uh, which is a more like an interface to use the various uh, the pre trained uh, the self supervised language model for speech recognition. And then this one is actually called in ESPNet so that you guys can just changing the configuration file. You can play with the Hubert or Web2, Back2, uh, and so on. Okay, so uh, this is about the end-to-end -end system. And now I move to the form-based system. Uh, it doesn't have so much time. Um, so form-based system, I mentioned that the uh, uh, without expert knowledge may have a pros and a cons. And I will explain about that actually some, uh, that there are many cases uh, linguistic knowledge is actually quite important to build a speech recognition system. Uh, for example, uh, the, remember our kind of a pipeline, acoustic model, lexicon language model. And it looks like we need a pair data of the input and the output, right? But please uh, the focus on this part. This is fun. Well, mostly people are using phoneme, but they, it can be universal form. And then phone is actually language independent. So if we collect a lot of kind of a speech data, uh, like a English or a Mandarin and so on, and making a phone recognizer. And then later, if we have a, uh, some kind of a, lang a lexicon of the target language, we can actually connect all of this part so how to do it? First, build acoustic model, but the, based on the form-based language mo acoustic model, and which can be possibly language independent. And uh, try to find a phonetic dictionary of the target language uh, by using the wiki dictionary or whatever, uh, the, using the linguistic resource. And then sometimes if we don't have enough uh, the word coverage, we can use a grapheme to phoneme G2P technique. Language modeling part. We don't need a pair data, right? So we're just using the text data to build the language model. So it turns out that we do not need a parallel data. We just need to have our, uh, the lexicon and the, uh, the phone recognizer and the language model uh, to uh, build uh, the, uh, uh, the speech recognition system uh, for the target language. So this approach is actually one of the method if we don't have so much training data uh, or if we don't have uh, the, we if we don't have so much training data or if we don't have any training data and this methodology is very difficult when we use it in the end to end system because we don't have this kind of clear modularity right so actually in many of the other uh, uh, the uh, low resource speech equation Still, form based, HM based system is popular and actually better 
than uh, the end-to-end -end system uh, if we don't have enough uh, the training data. And lastly, I would like to introduce some of our ongoing uh, the, the project. First one is end-to-end -end ASR. This is actually you guys are contributing this project. Our, our group and uh, everyone now is trying to actually build uh, the speech recognition for many languages, as many as possible. Public data, uh, reproducible recipe, a pre-trained model. And in our cases, uh, we use the ESPNet, but any other toolkit is fine. But the intention of our kind of uh, the, this uh, the project is anyway, try to cover uh, the, the, uh, the speech recognition uh, for uh, the many languages, as many as possible. And again, you guys are a very important contributor for this project. And the other approach is a form-based ASR. And uh, this is actually possibly we can build 2000 languages. Of course, uh, it is very difficult to evaluate it. So we are still kind of uh, remaining 100 languages as an evaluation. But actually by using the form-based techniques, even we can expand uh, 2000 languages uh, based on our effort. And uh, there are a lot of other activities in CMU uh, to uh, the, the working on the multilingual uh, speech processing, not only speech recognition, CTS, speech translation, and any other kind of a spoken uh, the language processing and so on. And uh, I want to show you one of the web page that so this is under construction. But we are now trying to make a kind of this kind of CMU multilingual speech uh, database. And the, as we said that we have our many languages, right? 8,000 languages. And in terms of this ESPNet project, uh, model, our coverage is actually only this area. There are some missing information, by the way. We also have some uh, the, the models here and so on. So the uh, coverage can be more, but at least our uh, the speech equation language coverage is now only 0.59%. And the, even uh, the, the, uh, the corpus it can be more, but still uh, the, uh, the, if we don't include the, the, uh, the uh, Bible corpus, uh, the coverage is very small. But if we include the Bible corpus, uh, it becomes uh, the, the nearly uh, the, uh, the, the one percent and so on. And the recipes are also uh, very small. So uh, this uh, the showing that that uh, we actually need to work more to improve the coverage uh, of uh, this uh, part. Uh, and the, your uh, assignment is actually contributing to improve the coverage uh, to be a uh, larger side. Okay, uh, this is the uh, end of my uh, the talk. And the today's discussion uh, is how to improve the coverage of uh, ASR and the TTS technology. Uh, what kind of effort uh, we can do uh, the, for uh, the uh, to improve the uh, coverage, and uh, there are a lot of kind of uh, dimensions that uh, that we can consider, and uh, let's try to discuss and uh, let's try to kind of come up with uh, very cool ideas to improve the coverage of the multilingual uh, speech uh, processing. Okay, uh, let's start the discussion. <laughs>